Hello everyone, my name is Brian, but you can call me the Bugler, and today I'd like to welcome you to my first exotic weapon breakdown and analysis. It's going to be for the Skyburner's Oath, so let's jump right into it. The Skyburner's Oath is an exotic energy scout rifle that deals solar damage. It has two perks that I would consider to be exotic. The first one is called Slug Rifle. It allows the weapon to fire solar slugs that get stronger while aiming down the sights. This perk has other hidden implications, but we'll get to those when we come to it. The next perk that I would consider exotic is called For the Empire. It allows the weapon to fire in full auto, deal extra damage against Cabal, and also penetrate through phalanx shields. Let's take a look at the slugs first. The Skyburner's Oath, when firing from the hip, has a rounds per minute, or RPM, of 200. That means it shares the same damage as other energy scout rifles in the 200 RPM archetype. We'll get to those exact numbers soon, but first, let's take a look at what happens when we aim down the sights. Your RPM decreases from 200 to 150, and what this means is the archetype also changes. So that damage increase that we gain thanks to our exotic perk is actually due to our weapon physically changing archetypes when you're aimed down the sights. And before we move on, I just want to point out how cool the feedback is on this weapon's heads-up display. You can see the amount of ammo we have remaining is being counted down by those red notches, as well as an actual counter written in Cabal right above that. The Cabal counter might not be useful, but it's still pretty cool looking and I do appreciate the nice touch. Let's move on to that damage now. When damaging these enemies, the Conspirator deals the same amount of damage as the Skyburner's Oath would when firing from the hip. That's because the Conspirator is a 200 RPM energy scout rifle. So to these enemies, we deal 44 to the body and 132 damage to the head. However, when we aim down the sights with the Skyburner's Oath, you can see our damage increase to that of a 150 RPM archetype. So to these enemies, we deal 57 damage to the body, and 157 damage to the head. And that's because 150 RPM scout rifles have a slightly less critical hit multiplier than 200 RPM scout rifles. The implication of this archetype change is that we lose out on a little bit of potential damage. Had we have just been granted a damage increase when aiming down the sights, our critical multiplier would have stayed the same at three times meaning we deal more damage than we deal now at the 150 archetype crit multiplier, which is about 2.7. So although we deal a net increase in damage, it could have been higher had our RPM stayed the same. Let's take a look at the damage increase we deal to Cabal next. When attacking these enemies with our 200 RPM energy scout rifle, we deal 99 damage to the body and 297 damage to the head. This number increases when we use our Skyburner's Oath, at 109 damage to the body and 327 damage to the head. This is a 10% increase in total damage, and they also share the same critical hit multiplier as I mentioned previously, at 3 times. When we aim down the sights, our damage increases with the Skyburner's Oath to 139 damage to the body and 389 damage to the head. This means that our archetype damage numbers match up. But there is something that I have to point out here. Because the Skyburner's Oath is an energy scout rifle, we suffer a damage penalty against enemies that are unshielded. This means that 150 RPM scout rifles that are kinetic will still outdamage the Skyburner's Oath against Cabal enemies. I feel like this is a major misstep, but it's something we'll cover later in the video. Let's talk about the Phalanx Shield penetration next. Thanks to the perk for the Empire, we can fire this weapon in full auto and shoot through phalanx shields, although with a caveat. If you fire on a phalanx shield, it will go straight through it unless you shoot them in the diamond. This diamond, for normal people, is what you would shoot to make a phalanx shield go down. If you're using the Skyburner's Oath, however, it will actually block your bullets because it has its own separate hitbox. If you shoot in any other spot on the shield, your bullet will pass completely through it without a damage penalty. This is a little bit situational, but it's also very cool. Just remember, avoid the diamond. A quick warning before we move on. There's going to be a location spoiler for the raid, so if you don't want to see the beginning entrance to the raid, skip forward about a minute or so. Alright, you've been warned. 
Here we go. Let's take a look at the damage falloff for this weapon next. You can see, against these enemies at the beginning of the raid, we deal 271 damage while aiming down the sights, and 212 damage when firing from the hip. How long do we have to walk away from them in order for this damage number to fall off, though? The answer might surprise you, in that it's basically infinite. I could not find a falloff range for this damage. I even got so far away from the enemies that I could not physically see them. They hadn't popped in yet, and the damage numbers that I see are still equal to those from when I was standing right next to them. I think this endless range is a result of our weapon firing slugs, whatever that means, but I'm unable to confirm this because every weapon in the game starts off with all the perks unlocked. All I can do is speculate at this point, but I can tell you that it is pretty cool to have a scout rifle that doesn't have any damage fall off at all. Now I'm going to talk briefly about how this weapon performs in PvP. The basic understanding, as far as I'm concerned, is that it's okay. I mean, it's a scout rifle in the current PvP meta, so it should be strong, but it's of 150 RPM arc type when aiming down the sights. This means you're at a bit of a disadvantage when you're shooting against other popular scout rifles that are all 200 RPM, such as the Mita Multi-Tool. It's also important to note that this weapon may have high caliber rounds active when aiming down the sights. I've heard people speculate that this is true, although I'm unable to test it definitively since we don't have private PvP matches. What I did to see if this was the case in PvE was test how many shots it took to make enemies flinch, and it had the same amount of flinching shots as a 150 RPM archetype kinetic scout rifle. So I couldn't really measure any sort of bullet sway or anything like that, so unfortunately, I can't confirm or deny whether or not this weapon has high caliber rounds. The one advantage that this weapon has over other scout rifles is that it does not suffer damage fall off. So that means, provided your sight lines are long enough, you can completely out damage other scout rifles that will suffer that damage fall off. It's a rare occurrence, but it does come into play at some ranges, and it is helpful. Alright, now I'm going to give you my final opinion on the Skyburner's Oath. For PvE, it's just okay. It's not very good, unfortunately, and I think that you're better off using just about any other legendary scout rifle in most situations. Even in the situations where this weapon is supposed to shine against Cabal enemies, your 150 RPM scout rifles will still deal more damage provided they're kinetic. I think that's a major misstep for this weapon as a whole. I feel like it should deal the most damage out of any scout rifle to Cabal enemies, period. Maybe if we increase the extra damage up to 20% from the 10% that it sits at currently, this weapon would see more use, especially in Cabal-heavy strikes, or even situations during the raid where other players might want to utilize a different weapon than they're stuck with. The Skyburner's Oath will use up your only exotic weapon slot, so unfortunately, we have to compare it to the other exotics you could be using in order to measure some sort of opportunity cost. And the opportunity cost for using this weapon is fairly high. When you could use a weapon like Merciless, or even the Wardcliffe Coil, I don't really see a reason to use this weapon over other scout rifles, when they do the same job it does in most situations, and even better in some other situations. When you have a weapon like the Nameless Midnight being given out for free, there is really no reason for you to be using this weapon unless you're in it for the aesthetics, which I have to say are pretty stylin'. The sound effects of this weapon, as well as just how it looks overall, and the animations of when you kill enemies, watching them burst into a solar mist, is just straight up cool, and it definitely deserves points there, but that doesn't mean you'll be using it in high level content, where points, for style, don't really mean much. Overall, I'd say if you get this weapon a drop for you, maybe give it a try for a little bit but leave it behind for just about every activity unless you're looking to just mess around and have a good time. In PvP, you might get some usage out of it, but I'd say you're better off with other scout rifles as well. And that's the end of this exotic breakdown. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about how I conducted the tests, or why I might not have included other footage, 
please let me know in the comments so I could answer them for you. Also, if you have any suggestions on how I can improve the format of these exotic weapon breakdowns, please let me know. This is my first one, so the format is still a little loose here. In my next video, I'll be covering the Hollow Fire Heart for the Sunbreaker Titan. You can expect that video over the next couple of days. As per usual, I'll be going live on Twitch in about a half hour, so you're welcome to stop on in and ask whatever questions you'd like. You can find the link to my Twitch channel in this video's description, as well as the link to our clan. Anyone's allowed to join, just request, it's completely open, or our Discord server. This is a place where you can stop on in, ask questions of me or anyone else in our community. It's a nice place where we can get together and talk about whatever you'd like. You can also find the link to my Patreon if you're feeling generous or so inclined. So once again, thanks for watching, I hope I see you next time, and good luck! Getting through the exclusion zone.